why would I want an IUL, indexed universal life insurance policy, if I don't need life insurance? Uh, I don't have any beneficiaries. Uh, good question, um, but you're gonna be blown away with my response here. Basically, don't get hung up on what it is, life insurance. Focus on what it does and choose the vehicle that generates the most income for you at the time in life you're gonna use it the most. The life insurance is coming along for the ride. You can make anybody the beneficiary and you'd be surprised uh, future insurance needs are likely going to happen and you'll already have it in place. So get ready. So I'm Doug Andrew and um, I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for five decades, helping thousands of Americans optimize their assets, minimize taxes, uh, prepare for long-term goals such as a comfortable retirement to not outlive their money. And if you've watched, if you've watched very many episodes on this channel, uh, you'll know quickly that my favorite financial vehicle without question to achieve long-term goals is like the dream solution for many long-term goals, college funding for your kids and grandkids, working capital for your business, estate planning, and so forth. But it knocks the socks off of putting your money in traditional IRAs or 401ks invested in the market. What is it? A property structured max funded IUL. And then people go, well, what if I, I don't need life insurance, okay? I don't have any beneficiaries. Why would I want to incur the costs of life insurance? And I smile and I go, here's why, okay? Now, the reason why most people use it for uh, retirement, for example, or any long-term goal, is because it's one of the very few vehicles in the Internal Revenue Code uh, that eliminates the three big dangers that cause most people to outlive their money. Taxes, inflation and market volatility, okay? How does it do that? Well, uh, property structured IUL, it's tax-free. Your money accumulates tax-free, uh, you take out the money tax-free, the rate of return, you can generate a 10% payout, a million dollars of cash value in an IUL can generate 100,000 a year of tax-free income. Uh, if you rebalance uh, uh, and diversify, from age 65 to age 120, show me any other financial vehicle that gives you a net 10% payout after taxes and everything, after all fees, costs, taxes, uh, that will last that long. Uh, you, uh, you, very, very few vehicles could even come close to that. It's tax-free. Uh, I don't like inflation any more than anybody, but it didn't hurt me. I've always been able to outpace inflation uh, by linking my returns to the things that inflate. Even if inflation hits double digits, uh, if it hits 10 or 15, I've been able to earn 20, 25, 61%, okay? Uh, indexing allows me to participate if the market goes up, but if the market crashes, I don't lose one dime due to a market downturn, okay? Uh, if you don't understand why, I would recommend uh, you watch other episodes on this channel. You can uh, study my book. The three greatest benefits of a property structured IUL is liquidity, the ability to access your money when you need it, safety, not only of the institution, but safety of principle. Uh, whatever I set aside for future goals like retirement, I, I don't want to, to uh, lose that principle, but any year I make money, I want any money I make any year to become newly protected principle. I don't wanna lose in future years money I made in previous years. Very few advisors know how to do that one. Um, IUL does that. It's called lock in and reset. And so third is, is a rate of return. You don't need pie in the sky rates of return, even though by rebalancing and diversifying, many of our clients, some years may be credited 25%, 61%, 158% uh, by a, a rebalancing and switching maybe from a cap strategy to a threshold strategy, okay? You can watch uh, episodes on does IUL work to see examples of this. Uh, but usually uh, our clients will average uh, 11 to 14 percent. If you if you average 11, you'll net 10 because the cost of insurance only uses about one percent. So when people say, "Why would I want an IUL?" Show me any other investment where you could earn 11 and net 10, cash on cash. Okay, tax free in other words. In an IRA or 401k invested in the market, you'd have to earn 15, pay tax of a third to net 10 try to earn 15% uh, uh, year in and year out. 
Uh, no, you'd have to take a lot of risks to try to do that. You have to earn 15 to net 10. and IUL, I only have to earn 11 to net 10. Well, <clears throat> what's that 1%? Well, it's the cost of the insurance. Well, I don't need insurance. Well, <clears throat> what else can do this? Well, nothing, but I don't need insurance. And I go, doggone it, quit focusing on what it is, focus on what it does. If you don't care about the insurance, make me the beneficiary, and they finally wake up, okay? So um, many times I'll, I'll do it this way. I'll ask an audience, here's some baking soda, right? What are some uses for this? And usually the women in the audience will say, oh, you can uh, soak in the tub. You can take the odor out of your refrigerator. Uh, <clears throat> men say, I clean my battery terminals with it. And then somebody finally goes, oh, it's good for baking. Yeah, the obvious, okay? See, most people view insurance, sometimes even as a negative. Uh, they view it as a death benefit. And that's why they go, well, I don't need insurance. I don't have any beneficiaries. Don't focus on what it is. See, it's actually life insurance. We use it for life, for living benefits. Focus on what it does while you're alive, not for death. That is secondary when you max funded you know, max, max fund or max funded of an IUL policy. So focus on what it does. So let me give you an example here. You can't see the numbers on the screen. I'm putting it up here though on purpose. This is figure 10.1 in my book, The Laser Fund. This is figure 10.2. Uh, if you were to study this figure, this one is an example of a, a person at age 50 opening up an IUL policy and funding it, max funding it in five years under the TAMRA uh, guidelines as fast as the IRS allows. They put in 100,000 a year for five years and stop. They max funded it. Uh, they, they're 55, they're not gonna retire until they're 65. So they let it sit for 10 years and uh, it has grown now to a million four hundred and forty-five thousand dollars Not bad. If they happen to die, uh, it'll pay out a million seven hundred sixty-two thousand. Yeah, uh, but they didn't do it for that. They did it for the accumulation. They have a, almost a one point five million in there. Well, um, that IUL can generate about a ten percent payout. If you have a million and a half, you could pull out one hundred fifty grand a year. So uh, one hundred fifty-one thousand sixty-six dollars a year. You take out of this, it's totally tax-free. How long will that last? Based on actual historical performance on the actual S&P historical performance, that will last until you're age 120. And you'll still have your money in that policy, okay? Uh, you'll still have over a million bucks in there if you died at age 120. Compare that to uh, a tax-deferred IRA or 401k invested in the S&P 500 actual S&P 500 in that market, okay? If you did that, you uh, would uh, maybe, if you were lucky, have about a million and a half dollars in, in 15 years, but you gotta pay tax on that now. So you pull out 151,000, the same amount of income. That's not all your money. You have to pay tax on that. You pull out 150,000 in a 33% bracket, you're only gonna net about 100,000 to buy gas and groceries, prescriptions and golf green fees, okay? So you pull out 150 and you're only gonna net 100. But you pull out 150 and guess what? The money in the fund is going to be drained dry because if you need a net of 150, if you really wanna compare apples to apples, if you need a net of 150 after tax, in a 33% tax bracket, you go, you've got to pull out 50% more money. What's 50% more, okay, than, than 150? It's another 75,000. You have to pull out 225,000, pay tax of a third, 75 grand a year to net 150. You, you got it? I'm comparing apples to apples. I, I need a net of 150. Money in the same S&P in the market, in an IRA or 401k, you'll be out of money at age 79. Drain dry. Hope you don't live beyond that or you're gonna be relying on social security, charity, welfare, or your children for support. The laser fund goes on uh, from that age uh, another 40 years. And so I, I asked the client when I, when I create this, 
which one would you like? And they go, duh. Uh, the one over here on the left, uh, what is that? I go, um, that's IUL, that's, that's life insurance. Oh, 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 oh I, don't, I don't need any insurance. I go, which one generated the most? Well, that one. Well, well then why are you worried about what it, what it is? Well, how much does that cost? That's the wrong question. How much does it make you? Uh, this is after all costs. They go, wait a minute. You mean there aren't costs and fees uh, on top of that? I said, no, that's already shown within it. Which one generated the most to age 120? They go, hands down this one. I go, are you getting it? Quit focusing on what it is, focus on what it does. And they finally get over it and then they, <laughs> then they usually take it out and they're glad because later on they get married or, or they start a business or, or they have estate planning and, and then they all of a sudden want life insurance, it's already in place. Uh, it's a lot better to have and not need than need and not have. It's a lot better to have life insurance before you need it than to need it and then not be able to qualify for it. Does that make sense? Especially if it's not costing you anything compared to other alternatives. This is figure 10.2. This is a very conservative example where uh, somebody just minimum funds and only gets a 7% rate of return on an IUL policy. They pull out 51,000 a year. It lasts until age 120. In a 401k, based on the same 7% rate of return, uh, they have to pull out $70,000 to net 51. That is out of money again by age 81. Which one do you choose? So uh, in uh, this chapter in my book, uh, The Laser Fund, where you're comparing to various alternatives, there's this chart and we show IRAs or 401ks invested in the market, mutual funds, your home or real estate, uh, CDs and banks, annuities, and then we show the IUL Laser Fund over here on the right. Uh, without question, an IUL Laser Fund has far more advantages and that's why it lasts longer. Better rates of return, tax-free, higher income, it lasts longer. Once you understand that, then you're not so hung up on what it is. You focus on what it does, okay? So uh, let me connect the dots here quickly. <clears throat> um, when you understand this, you'll all of a sudden go, oh my heck, I didn't know what I didn't know. And many times even advisors have a wake up call. So my question is, uh, study what it does, which one is superior. And uh, if you don't have any beneficiaries, you take out a policy and you can name, you know, relatives, nieces, nephews. I've uh, had people do that, aunts and uncles. Uh, uh, you can name uh, a charity after the policy is taken out. Uh, if, if you don't want the insurance on you, uh, you could take it out on your parents. I've owned insurance policy on my parents and my in-laws. I own it on my kids. But see, you could take it out on your parents because it's the owner of the insurance contract that gets all the tax-free income and tax-free access. So if you don't care about having the life insurance death benefit on your life, you own a policy on somebody else. And then if they die, you can benefit or you can leave that to a charity to where, you know, many times I'll name a charity and they get all of the money in the death benefit on top of me getting my cash value back. It's a win-win. So you have to prove when you take out a policy uh, that there's a reason and justification for the amount of insurance. Uh, but even if you don't have children or beneficiaries, you can uh, justify a policy based on, I'm trying to preserve my estate uh, from a state tax, okay? Uh, I have future plans. I may get married. Uh, I'm starting a business and I, I want to make sure my business is debt free when I die. So this is covering debts or uh, it's making sure that I have the money in my business uh, to maximize liquidity, safety and rate of return, what have you, okay? So there's all kinds of possibilities. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't need life insurance. Don't get hung up on that. Choose the investment that generates the most at the time in life you're going to need the money the most. The death benefit is just sort of coming along for the ride, as I say. So if this is intriguing you, uh, yeah, you could uh, get a free copy of my book, The Laser Fund, 300 pages of charts, graphs, and explanations by going to laserfund.com and contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll fire out a hard copy to you. But if you want to learn more 
and you wanna do a deeper dive, a little bit different uh, take and perspective, I would recommend uh, that, that you watch this episode up here and uh, you'll get some more insights into opportunities that maybe you didn't know existed before for you. <laughs>